Oh, yes. We made it. It is Friday. Mm. Yep. And today's Fun Day Friday is all about brisket. We're also going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, how you can win a dual fire. That's right, the all new dual fire. Stay tuned. It's Fun Day Friday, baby. Brisket. That is not right. No, hey, 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 everybody. Hey, hey. we hope you're doing well. Happy Fun Day yeah. Friday. We are live right here on the Rec Tech deck. Those of you that don't know me, my name is Jody Flanagan. I am uh, affectionately called the barbecue dad around here, and I'm technically your Rec Tech expert. With over 20 years of culinary experience, you can trust me with any type of food. I'm joined here with my two good friends. That's right. Chef Greg Muller, the director of culinary innovation. Yeah, we got ready to get some uh, good brisket on the, the way. That's what right. about you? What's your name, big guy? I'm Chef John Pinnell, and uh, like uh, Chef Greg and Jody, 20 plus years of culinary experience, wealth of knowledge, over 60 years Man. of knowledge right here, guys. They can trust us. They, they can. We're not going to lead you astray. That's right. That's right. But today is all about brisket. We're also going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, how you can win a dual fire. We're also announcing last week's winner That's of right. the 20-quart icer cooler. Shout out to everybody who participated. But again, we give away something every week. Yes, uh, this one's going to be a little bit of a longer one. It's all about brisket. We really want you guys to ask the questions. I've got my phone, uh, YouTube, and Facebook. Fill up that comment section That's down right. below because there's a wealth of knowledge right here. That's right. But it is all about brisket today. So again, it'll be a little bit longer of a show. Yeah, yeah, it's um, okay. But please, ask any and all questions. Yeah, right? and for all you guys that are, are rec tech aficionados, y'all know how to do brisket. Right, they knock out brisket all apart. Yeah, all this the time. is for all those new people who are maybe on the fence about doing a brisket um, all by themselves. We're gonna take you through the steps, right, Chef Greg? Shoot, yeah. I'd love people to comment down below what grill you have at the house, oh, right? Okay. And how long yeah. you've been cooking on your rec tech? Because I don't know about you guys, my first brisket was absolute garbage, <laughs> right? And that and that day changed about six and a half years ago when I brought my RT680 home uh, and started my my journey with the rec tech family. But we're gonna talk about brisket. Brisket is the pectoral muscle of Shoot, the yeah. cow, so it's the breastplate. It's the muscle that stands that animal up and down in the field. And uh, we have, this is a full packer brisket, okay? This is actually a USDA Prime. This thing weighs 17.12 pounds, and Jody paid $85 for it. Yeah, he did. It's a good piece of meat. Now, we call it a full packer brisket because it has the, uh, the flat and the point, okay? So it's when it comes from the meat packer, it's in a cryovac as a whole piece, okay? So again, $4.98 a pound, it's good value. We also picked up a flat. Now, this is, you can find this at your grocery store as well. But keep in mind, this is $10.99 a pound, right? So that's $70. Holy smokes. So you get almost 18 pounds of meat for you know, $85 or 6.38 pounds for 70 bucks, right? Wow. And here's the thing about this. See how kind of like thin and skinny this is? Very inconsistent. There's like a big gash right here. Oh, Lord. There's, it's not very consistent, okay? Save your money, okay? So I'm going to teach would you. you buy that though, Chef now, Greg? this is great for like beef jerky if it's on, on sale. You can slice it up and make beef stew. There you go. Um, but for me, the best bang for your buck is right here getting that whole pack of brisket. And that's where we're going to show you how to trim up right Ohio, now. Massachusetts, Missouri, California. Oh, wait. Les Burl from Louisiana. He's out Love there. Les Burl. Uh, we got some 680 owners out there. Shout out to all the 680 owners. That's there we go. That's right. I love that grill. All right. So. This might be intimidating. I assure you, it's not. The hardest thing about cooking brisket is purchasing the right one. So mm -hmm. what you want to do is shoot for a 16 <laughs> to 18 pound piece of meat and start here, okay? You've already made the smartest decision by purchasing that Rectech behind you. It doesn't matter what grill you're cooking on. That's right. Um, your Rectech will do it for you. Now we want to get this thing a little bit more consistent and even. So this big piece of hard fat is called your deckle. Okay, we're going to trim this off. We're going to use a really nice sharp knife. And again, that's all fat. You can cube this up, render that out. That's that fancy buzzword called tallow. There you go. Okay, if you don't believe me, look it up. It's just rendered beef fat. And all we're gonna do is, I got that pan right there, we'll just drop it in. Okay. It's just trim this off. Okay, now don't throw this away, right? You can render this out, cook with it. It is unbelievable. Yeah, we you got can, some deer in the freezer, Chef Greg. Oh, we gotta mix some of that fat right, in there. Right. Now you can see how we kind of exposed a little bit of that meat there. 
That right there is called the point. See how fatty that is and absolutely delicious? That's where those burn ends come from. Okay, stay tuned. We'll take so it to the So to dumb it down, land. Chef Greg, it's two muscles that come together to make one piece of meat, technically. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and again, they cook a little bit different, but we're going to trim this and make it a little bit easier on us. Now, right? Chef Greg, answer me this. Say I didn't trim this at all. I just seasoned it up yep. right out of the package and put it on the rec tech. Would it cook? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay, but we're gonna do a couple things over here. Now this top side, sometimes you see there's a flap of fat. Sometimes they call that the tomahawk. Okay, and if you pull on it long enough, you can actually stretch it out. And sometimes it might be in a little bit different place because again, all cows are different. That's right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of trim this out. And this is more of a spongy fat, right? Oh man, look at all that, that protein good, right there. That's some good stuff. Now this is where that point meat is, okay? And this is gonna be the fattier piece of the brisket. So all we're gonna do is take that knife and just kind of shave this down a little bit. And again, you can see that fat is beautiful, mm -hmm. okay? And again, you can cut twice, so just trim it off in nice, easy, easy uh, pieces. Don't feel like you gotta like get in there like an absolute crazy person. Now, Chef okay? Greg, what's the easiest way to make tallow out of all that fat? So what I do is I kind of cube it up in small pieces and I stick it on a pan right next to my brisket and let it just slow render out. You know, and that way, all you got to do is it's like liquid gold after a couple hours. So no, nothing else in the pan, just the that's fat it, in just the pan. just dry I fat. If you're YouTube. worried about it, you can put a little bit of water in there, but I mean, I wouldn't worry about it. Shout out YouTube, Omaha, California, St. Pete, Florida, Lagrange, Oregon, it's South healthy. Carolina, Ohio, Ohio, uh, Eden, North Carolina, uh, Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania, Florida's, Florida's. Uh, shout out everybody in the YouTube chat. Yeah, shout out I love it. I Good love question um, from Facebook. What is your favorite seasoning for brisket? Ooh, favorite uh, has to be the Ben's Heifer Dust. If I had to pick one, I'm going to stick with tried and true. That Ben's mm -hmm. Heifer Dust, we use it on all things beef, and it does a fabulous job. Shoot, yeah, shoot, yeah. Very good questions. Keep them coming, YouTube, as well uh, as uh, Facebook. Can you... Uh, can a good brisket be smoked on the Bullseye Deluxe? Yes, Absolutely. Sir, sure enough, kid. Jody, actually, you've made your best brisket ever. Mm -hmm. on my, the bullseye. my two, two best briskets two best. Tell that them. I've ever made. Talk my life to the people. Have Jody. been on the Bullseye. Preach. That's what I'm talking two. about. Two. It just cooks different, baby. Mm -hmm. There's only one piece of metal between the meat and the mm -hmm. heat. You're getting more of that drier heat. Yeah. Getting a little bit more of that crustification on the outside. But my two best briskets I've ever cooked, hot and fast, on the brisket. Yes, we did have a half pan okay, with some liquid in. That's what I was going to ask you. That's yeah. okay. How do you set it up? Yep. Tell them how you set it up. Yep. It's so a little the, different. The way we set it up for indirect cooking uh, is we just place a pan, an aluminum half pan, on half uh, of the deflector. Yep. Uh, I like to put it on the right-hand side so it doesn't mess with that RTD located mm -hmm. on the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. Put a little bit of water or my brother-in-law's beers that he leaves in the refrigerator. You like those I don't like, I don't like those <laughs> That's IPAs. why you put them in there. <laughs> uh, so we put them in there. And again, cook right on the grate. Easy yep. peasy. All right, Sam, so make it on here. Now, this one side, you'll see there's like a little graying. There's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean your brisket's bad. It's really from the packaging process. So when they put that meat in the cryovac, yeah. it's basically just some steam. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of trim off that outer quarter inch or so and just expose that nice, clean meat here, okay? Now you can eat this. There's nothing wrong with that, but it just looks ugly, so we're going to trim it off, okay? Now we basically, the only meat we're losing is this stuff right here, okay? This is not going to waste. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make some beef stew, There you go. right? And all I'm going to do is cube this up Okay, so none of this goes to waste. So you're gonna put that in your uh, Rectech Dutch oven, fry it up with some vegetables, and make an absolutely delicious uh, beef stew. And if you're looking for a great beef stew recipe, we've got that Schinerbach Braise beef, uh, mm -hmm. really good. Now again, you can see this is the, the flat here and the grain. Think of like angel hair pasta running in this way. Okay, so when we slice the brisket, we wanna slice it against the grain. So what I like to do is take the end and kind of dock it right there. This is gonna there win that beef stew. And now I know where to slice back from. Okay, Good so all you're doing is looking for stuff hanging off, but that's it. We're done trimming. Okay, don't overthink it. Don't overcomplicate it. It's really not rocket science. Yes. Okay, okay, guys, Kevin's asking, uh, can flats still be smoked without injecting, without doing all kinds of stuff to them, and still be juicy and moist? He says his are always dry. Yeah. We talked about this earlier. Yeah, yeah so the biggest thing is when you buy a package flat from the grocery store, a lot of times they're really thin, they're super inconsistent, mm -hmm. and it's almost like a flank steak when you're done trimming it off. Yeah. So again, you know, this piece of meat was $85 to start with and was more than twice as big as that flat that was $70. Mm -hmm. I'd rather get the bigger one. That way I can control all of this. And speaking of control, we're gonna use some of that Rectech injection right now to get maximum flavor into this piece of meat. Now for me, when I inject, it's it's really about flavor. There are some um, 
phosphates in here that are going to help tenderize and That's retain right. moisture. But ultimately, it's really difficult to season a piece of meat from the inside out. So we're going to take that injector as well and kind of load it up, right? Now, uh, guys, good question out here. Um, would you change, you know, besides the bullseye, would you change your cooking take technique um, on depending on the different grills that you have at the house? 100% no on that. If you, if it doesn't matter if it's the 590, 700, 1250 BFG. The cooking process is going to stay exactly the same mm -hmm. way for me. Now, how about you, Chef Greg? I honestly change stuff up all the time. Do you? Right? I do. I like to play and see what's different. Sometimes no, no, I wrap I mean, not, like, not like your cooking process, but whether the, the cooking of the grill, of the brisket oh, itself. No. Yeah, so the only thing that's different is when you have a cooking on a smaller grill, like the, the 410 or the 340p, you might experience a little bit quicker cook times. Why? Because that grill's in a much smaller environment. That uh, muscle is a lot closer to not only the fire pot, but the barrel of the grill as well. So that's why maybe you're cooking a couple briskets on our BFG. It might take a little bit longer um, versus, say, a, a 410 or a 340p, but we're going to inject this thing now I'm gonna come in with the grit or the grain rather we're gonna use that needle with all those holes I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of come in here on an angle in the thickest part of the meat and just squeeze nice and easy okay and Taylor can you get the thing that started blowing up there you see that thing kind of swell up just nice and easy we're gonna inject this thing all across a brisket like this will easily accept about two cups of, of injection and again I'll put it in a foil pan if you don't want to make a mess it's okay we got people to clean up after us but we're going to inject all across that brisket nice and even when I get to the end here I actually turn it around and come backwards and make my life super super simple shout out Ralph the Barber uh, Kevin Bombers out there up, shout Kevin? out hey, Ashley Henson Ty Sherrill Jackie Milligan a lot of uh, a lot of the same names out there likes to watch all of us. There we go. Shout so out we're going to season this thing real quick. We're going to season the fat side down. Now I'm going to cook fat side down. Why? Because we put the fat towards the heat. Okay. A little four liter rub does absolutely delicious. There you go. You could also use that jalapeno ranch and that cowboy um, rub. That stuff is absolutely delicious. And that injection is going to work as our binder as well. Um, one thing we want to do when we inject, you want to give some time. So be patient. Let that injection uh, rest in that brisket. You know, a good six to eight hours in the fridge is perfect. Speaking okay. of being patient, yes, the folks out out there need to be patient for us, and they need to smash that share button. Let's do it. We got over 265 people watching. There we we'll go. You guys, hey. a countdown. Three, two, one. Smash, smash it. it! And to the older folks out there that don't really know, when we say smash it, we mean hit the share button. Yeah. The share button on any kind of social That's media it. that you're on. That's it. Or either save the link and then share it across all the platforms. Share it. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, we appreciate it. So one of the secrets of seasoning is season high and let it fly. Okay, this is a big piece of meat. It can take a lot of seasoning, right? And be be mindful that the seasoning is going to help develop that bark and go. that crust and that color. So if you're, you know, maybe did some briskets and they were a little light in color, I bet you didn't add enough seasoning. Okay. Shoot, yeah. So for me, this brisket is going to go in the fridge. It's going to sit for about six to eight hours, and I'm going to put this one on. Now, this one we did cook low and slow. And we'll show you how we do that in a second. But I just think Chef John's got a fantastic twist on some brisket. And I I'm excited do. to see how he does because it I smelled totally delicious do. earlier, man. I totally do. Thank you, Chef Greg. And he took us through the basics of how to do a proper low and slow brisket. I'm going to give you guys an alternative to that low and slow. We're going right. to be going hot and fast on the dual fire. Shoot, Chef. And I'm using those awesome Texas blend pellets. Ooh, I love ooh, them, Got Jody. a lot of folks uh, from Texas in the conversation. That's right. Shout out to you guys. All right. So, Chef Greg already showed you guys how to clean it. I did the exact same thing he did right right cleaned the uh, flat right we clean the point side leaving a little bit of fat I like to break my brisket into thirds. so this is the first third second third last third the first third because it has all of that um, fat in the point we try to trim all the fat off the top the middle we leave a little bit of fat because that's where the flat starts to come into the point and then the end is all flat, so it doesn't have as much intermuscular fat, so we're gonna leave a little bit on top. Okay? Chef John, you did a great job at trimming that. It's even and consistent in height that's right. from left to right, top to bottom. That's really important that's for what even you're cook. looking for. So once I got it to this point though, <clears throat> the thing that we did that Chef Greg did not do is we took some of the fat out of the middle, guys, right? So what I'm what we did was these two muscles right here, there's a seam of fat, right? So all we did was we took our knife and we just started cutting at that seam of fat and peeling the brisket back. Just following that seam of fat all the way down, right? Keep the questions coming, everybody. Put them in the comment section down below. So now we have our flat right here and our point right here. The reason why we did this is because we're gonna separate these after we wrap them, or before we wrap them, we're gonna separate them. But first things first, we're gonna go ahead and marinate ours. So we're not gonna eject, 
we're going to use this marinade. Now in this marinade, I put in a food processor, I put beef base, onion powder, garlic powder, Yum. ginger, brown sugar, Asian persuasion, sesame oil, and a little bit of soy sauce. Give it to me. I blended all this stuff up, right? I'll drink this stuff with, in a straw. <laughs> I know you would. I came up with this delicious dark looking paste. So we're going to take this paste. I like where your head's at with this. Right? Yeah. And we're just going to go right over with this paste, right? Now, so a lot of folks uh, out there on the internet, you know, love to separate the point and the flat. Me, I like the most amount of crustification. Yep. I like crust on the top as well as the bottom. Yes, sir. Um, so for me, you know, I'm going to, I'm never going to separate at the house, only for competition. Only for competition. That's right. So we're going to go ahead and give this a good lather, right? Both sides. I have a feeling the bark on this is going to be absurd. Yeah. I, like in the best kind of way. I'm telling you, Chef Greg, especially with those pellets that we're using, that Texas blend pellet, that dual fire, creating that perfect smoke. That's what you want. All right. So now we got it nice and messy, right? So we're going to flip this bad boy No, that's over. not messy. That's mm. perfect. It's a little perfectness. We're going to do the top. And then you're going to want to let this rest. So I'm going to put this in my refrigerator. And you could go up to overnight. I would say at least four hours, though. Give this a chance to really start to penetrate the delicious brisket that we have here. But once we've let this rest for about four hours, we're going to go ahead, preheat our dual fire, the indirect side, to 325 degrees. And we're going to put this bad boy straight in there. And right? again, we'll tell you how you can win a brand new dual fire Coming up That's right. on Sunday, Friday. Make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you smash that share button. We're cooking briskets. It's almost the time you ladies and gentlemen want to see the money shot time. We're about to slice into these bad boys, but we'll give you three seconds to smash the share button. We'll count you down. Three, two, one. Smash, smash it. it. Keep the questions coming. I'm checking you guys out in the comment section right now. I'm going to go ahead and announce our last week's winner. Let's, Let's do go. It, we Jerry. did spin the wheel of Rec Tech and it landed on a 20 quart icer cooler. This makes an amazing Christmas gift. So make sure you guys check them out at rectech.com or holiday gift, excuse That's me. Right. Um, but the winner of last week's Fun Day Friday prize, drum roll please, Boom. Chef John. <laughs> Find the giveaways to have on here. Miss what? Wendy McBride. Hey, Wendy. Shout out Wendy. Wendy asked a really good question. Uh, while we were cooking on the smoke stone, she was asking, how do you season and cook beef fajitas Ooh. in that bad boy? Beef fajitas? I mean, is it, isn't that not how everybody says it? <laughs> That's how I say it. That's how I say it. Which grill was she asking about? She was uh, the smokestone. How do you season and cook beef fajitas in go that ahead, bad you boy? Go ahead, Chef Greg. So for me, what I do is I'm going to slice that meat nice and thin across the grain. I'm going to get that smokestone wicked hot, like yep. medium high. And then I'm going to go nice, even flat layer. I'm going to get my onions, my peppers, my uh, squash, zucchini. I love mushrooms in yep, my feet as me well. Too, me too. And then the beauty of that, you have that rack on the top. You can warm your tortilla shells right there as well. Mm. But I'm ready to dive into this thing. Now, we did wrap this in butcher paper. Okay, now I did take a little secret here. We wrapped this thing with duck fat. Yeah. Ooh, you I heard like that right. Chef, Greg. We went overnight. Um, Danny, you want to pull that graph up for me if you get a chance? Um, I'm going to show you a snapshot of how I use the app because those of you that might not know, I was coaching a girls lacrosse game like right down the street. So before <laughs> I left, I stuck the uh, brisket on the grill and was monitoring it um, from about an hour away. You'll notice uh, that graph incline, that blue line, that's our temp probe. That's the internal temp of this brisket as it's cooking. And if you want a really consistent brisket, you want it to climb nice and even across. You will see it dip down really hard. That's when I took the probe out to wrap it in the butcher paper. No harm, no foul. Put it back in. You'll see that thing climb really nice. At the very top, you'll see that bar. That's going to be the actual temperature and the set point of the grill. Okay, you'll see it spike a couple times because I was getting impatient and I increased the grill temp 25 degrees twice because I wanted to get this thing done. So really simple. Again, you can share that graph. Maybe you don't cook brisket often. You can hit that floppy disk in the corner, put some notes in there, and that way when you do brisket again, you know, six months later, you know exactly what you did. All right, so we're going to go ahead and trim this out of the pack here. Okay. Illinois, Indiana, uh, more Illinois, Texas, Shut Florida, up. Georgia. Yeah. A good group of people out there. Um, uh, Chef John, yes, are sir. you going to post that recipe? Is it going to be posted at rectech.com? Rectech.com really soon. I already sent it over to Leah. Shout out to you, Leah. She's our awesome copywriter, getting all that sh stuff ready for you guys. So check for it soon. It'll be on the website. Look. Speaking of rectech.com, Look at the jiggle jiggle of that brisket. 15% okay. off of grill bundles right now at rectech.com, ladies and gentlemen. It's like it's Whee. like meat jello. Now, I know you guys are probably thinking, how in the heck is Chef touching that, right? 
Okay, because I cheated. Rectech.com, I got those cotton gloves underneath my nitrile gloves. We'll stick this back up here. Um, and that's how I'm able to hold that, okay? Now you can see the grain of the meat. I've got that flat spot. I just cut it back from there. But you guys are looking for the perfect shot, okay? Yeah, you are. And what you don't want to do is cut this in half and then squeeze the living daylights out of it. No, squeeze that's what, it. That's what squeeze amateurs it. do. Squeeze right? it. Squeeze it. So we're going to cut it right here and we'll show you how tender and delicious this is. Look at that brisket, okay? It is literally oh, meat jello. And oh. if your brisket doesn't have a little boogie woogie in it, you didn't do it right. Now, Chef Greg, typically how long are you going to let this rest before you actually slice it? Maybe about an hour and a half, two hours, okay? okay. Right now, this thing's sitting at about 180 degrees. It is hotter than the surface of the sun. Hotter than Jody's okay. first girlfriend. There you Ooh, go. Man, but when that's you not slice, hard. That's not hard. <laughs> you want to slice about pencil width thick. And you can see that smoke ring right there, people. Woo. That's what you want, okay? No other grill on the market will give you a smoke ring as good as that. Now, I left a good bit of fat on there because I like to eat it, okay? And yeah, this knife is sharper than Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. Oh, Lord. Okay. Okay. Right? So if you're brisket, this is how you know it's perfect. See how it jiggle jiggles? Mm. It dances, mm. okay? And mm. you give it like a little tug and it just falls right apart. That's what you want, okay? Shoot, perfect. Yeah, Each and every time. Shoot. Now we get to yeah. that back part, you'll see this is that flat meat, the, the leaner of the meat. Right in here is gonna be your point, the fattier meat. Now, if you wanna make burn ends, all we're gonna do is keep slicing back a little bit, okay? And then we're gonna take... Do I like those thick pieces? Ooh, I mean, I know. Right in here, we'll cube this up, okay? And we can toss it with our favorite sauce. A little bit more rub. And here's the beauty of a burn end, right? You get crispiness everywhere. Okay, mm. and it's like a, literally a meat marshmallow. Watch this. See how this is? Ready? Watch. It just, there's nothing left. It's literally rendered delicious. It's like a meat marshmallow. Okay, so that'll be the perfect burn end when we're ready to go. I love it, Chef. Yeah, Craig. buddy. I absolutely love it. It smells delicious out here, you guys. All right, mm. so this is what we did for the, on the dual fire. Yum. So we put this in 325, guys, hot and fast. That's the way to go. I'm telling you right now, there is no reason to do low and slow anymore after you see how delicious this brisket came out. So I brought it to an internal temperature of 165 degrees. Probably took about three hours to get it there. Okay. Once I got it to 165, it was time to wrap it up. So what I did was I went outside to my grill. I had all my mise en place together. I went ahead and had my Jody's Asian Persuasion, my beef stock, and I had some butter. This is what's gonna go in my wrap, okay? So I, I sliced the brisket, so it was sitting on top of each other like this. I took my chef's knife slicer, Rectex slicing knife, sliced it apart. So you separated the two muscles. Separated the two muscles and then wrapped them up individually just like that, right? So that's where we're at. Put it back in the grill and let it come till it was probe tender. And these temped out at about 203 to 205 on the okay. point. So let's see how they look. I'm super excited. I wouldn't foil because I always go in foil. So I just want to stay consistent to what I do. There's not a right or a oh, wrong way to do buddy. it. Holy smokes. Look how good that looks, guys. Yep. Now that bark's a little loose. A little loose. If you wanted to tighten it back up, you, you can, can throw it right back on the grill, right? Thank you, Jody. Thank you so much. That looks absolutely amazing, right? Let's go ahead and check out this point. Now, Chef Greg, a uh, good question about injecting. Uh, Does yep. the good injecting nice. essentially dispense throughout the entire piece of meat as it cooks? Or does it thin out some? No, so the injection essentially is gonna like sort of soak in and dissolve into that protein as well. So think of it like being able to season the meat from the inside out, right? So right. what that injection is gonna do, it's gonna bind on a lot of moisture as it's cooking. That's right. Okay, and you can see how moist that brisket looks right there, okay? That is injection right there. It's holding onto that moisture, it's holding onto that flavor. More importantly, I've got great flavor all the way across. And I made like a Texas style barbecue plate with some really soft bread, some pickles, some onions, because that's how I get down with my brisket. Yeah, you do, Chef Greg. Now, guys, this liquid inside this wrap. We're just going to throw that in the trash, right? You could throw it in the trash if you wanted to, but it, no. would, be best, it would be best if you got a, a fat separator. What? Yeah, you can find them on you know Amazon, big box stores. You can go pick one up. Separate the fat out of this, right? And then use that liquid as the liquid you're going to pour Ooh, back over yeah, the top chef of your brisket, right? That's the way to go. Cook it down, get it nice and thick, make your own little barbecue sauce. Yes, sir. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and slice into this thing. Now, like Chef Greg said, we'll go ahead and give you guys a peek. You wanna 
slice against the grain, but look oh, how man. good that looks. Look how juicy and delicious this is, right? So we're just gonna get a, a few slices against the grain to help it be nice and tender. But you can see all that intermuscular fat. That's flavor, buddy. That is flavor. So Chef John, how do you know when to wrap? So I like to wrap when the bark is set, guys. And it may be, uh, it may be like two hours, it may be four hours, but once that color gets on your brisket the way that you want it, Good stuff. if it's the, the dark mahogany is what you're looking for, or that nice red, uh, like mahogany color, Whatever it is, that's what you guys, that's when you want to wrap. When it looks done and looks like you're ready to slice into it. So it's not always the same temperature every time. No, it's not always the same temperature. Yeah. And that's why they tell you 165 to 175, because they don't know in the directions what kind of brisket you have. They don't know if it's yeah. choice prime or if it's a Wagyu brisket. Mm -hmm. So the directions are just there as just like a guideline. Yeah. For you. I wrapped mine at 155 because the bark looked really good. Yeah. And it, it hit uh, one, uh, sorry 202 and it felt nice and tender. I let it rest for about 45 minutes. And again, you can see that's a good looking piece of meat right there. That is a Keep great the questions piece. coming, everybody. We're right. gonna ask you to smash that share button to share these briskets all over the internet. So we'll this is how I like to finish right Three, here, Jerry. Two, one, smash, smash it. it! I like to get my kimchi, right? Right here on the back. Right, and this brisket is That's some ready bougie brisket right there. To oh, so that's that's Asian, Asian persuasion. Brisket. Asian persuasion br brisket. Good question here. Do you prefer a foil or a butcher paper? Foil. Makes less of a mess. That's how I that's where I stand on. Chef Greg? Um, it depends. I'm 50-50. Well, actually, I'm 33, 33, 33. Sometimes I don't wrap at all. Sometimes I use foil and sometimes I use paper. It's just like the mood, right? He's the politician. You know, politician right there. He can't pick one answer. But yeah, I definitely think that. What about you? Um, I really like foil. Again, it's easier to clean up. Yeah. And I get to keep all of the juices. Right. I get to separate. I get to save all of that delicious yep. jus mm -hmm. that we just made. Mm -hmm. So, All right, John showed you how he plated his up. I take my, my bread, right? And it's a wonder this actually works. Oh you really want to get that bread that's like really extra, extra soft. I grab some of that board jus, right, like that. Okay, I'm going to mm. grab a piece of brisket, right? Maybe... Couple more pieces. Ooh, Chef Greg, right? go. Yeah. Couple pickles. Yeah. Just like that. Couple onions. Do it, Chef Give another Greg. piece. Mm -hmm. And that's how I do my brisket sandwich. Woo! Just like that. But I'm going to cut it in thirds because I'm not a psychopath. Okay, I'm going to yeah, share you're with a my share, friends. Right? You're a share, Chef Greg. Yep. Um, and a lot of folks are asking uh, where to get a good brisket. My favorite place uh, is uh, our local butcher shop yes. or either um, our local farm here in town, uh, Chattel Farms. Visit shopchattelfarms.com to get an amazing American Wagyu brisket. Mm -hmm. uh, they provided the briskets for uh, Ray's Club, yeah. Academy, shout out to them. We visited the farm before and they're yep. really happy cows. Yep. I, I know you guys hear that a lot, but Jody and I went and visited the farm. It was absolutely amazing, shiny, Happy cows is how I could best describe it. All right, I'm ready for the best part of Funday Friday. It's that bite, so cheers, boys. Cheers to you guys. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. Mm. 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 Yeah. It's amazing. All right, we got to spin that wheel of mm. We like to start it on what we want to give away. It's always the most expensive item. That is not a B380X. That's a dual fire. We want to give away a dual fire That's if dope. it lands on it. Woo! But. You can win a dual fire. All you got to do is go to rectech.com and sign up for the newsletter. Folks that sign up for the newsletter, again, use every email that you have. You can have multiple entries, but every entry or every time you enter in your email wins you a chance Let's to go. win a brand new dual fire, okay? So go to rectech.com, enter in your email so you can win a dual fire. Let's go. But I want to give one away. You got to spin it to the right, yep. aka clockwise. Yes, sir. You got to spin it with the utmost confidence in yourself, hey. aka hard as hell. Hard as Count hell. me down, Big John. Three. Well, wait. Look at all of these amazing accessories that I you know. guys can go to rectech.com and get right now for your loved ones. Again, a lot of folks asking about Ray's Club. Yeah, baby. Ray's Club is our subscription box that you guys can totally take advantage of. One exclusive item, Ray's Hot Honey. Check it out. But a ton of amazing accessories available at rectech.com. Count me down, Chef John. Three, two, one, spin it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, share this video. Love this video and ask a great question in the comment section and you too could win yourself. Oh! Did I click it? Yeah, Did I click it? Yeah, I clicked it on a well, $50 look, gift card. Since I clicked it, it's going to be both a cookbook and then a $50 gift oh, card. I like it because I kind of screwed that up. Sorry, Combo everybody. Go. I love it. But you can win yourself a cookbook and a $50 e-gift card to rectech.com, R-E-C-T-E-Q.com, where it's 15% off select grill and grill bundles right now. That's right. Go I check like it, it out, guys. Go All you got to do, share this video. 
love this video and ask a great question in the comment section down below. We'll be picking from both YouTube and Facebook, okay? That's or right. Facebook. That's right. uh, both of them, actually. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, you know, we hope you guys, I know you guys, y'all have a great Thanksgiving. We didn't say anything about that. Yeah, we had a great Thanksgiving. Yeah. Absolutely. You had a great Amazing. one, Chef Greg. Amazing. Absolutely. We I'm glad that, there's no more turkey in my fridge. <laughs> we hope that you guys all out there have a happy Thanksgiving and the rest of your holidays are super yeah. and safe. And if there's any turkey or anything left over from Thanksgiving in your fridge, please throw, throw it, it away. Yep. Throw it away. Be safe. <laughs> throw that stuff out. Uh, call your moms. Call your grandmas. Call your grandpas. Just drive over to the house and still throw have, it out. Yeah, yeah. They still had that yeah. at their house. Yeah. Tell them to throw get, it out. Get rid of that green bean casserole. Gone. Yes. Gone. All right. I'm less uh, worried about the green bean casserole. Last more question. Worried. What's yeah. a floppy disk? What's up? Oh! oh. I don't even know what a floppy disk is in wow. the comment section down below. No, we're not going to answer that because you guys are, are crazy. How old are um, uh, from, I hope you learned something about brisket. Yes. Uh, please visit rectech.com because we've got amazing brisket recipes there. Please check us out on YouTube because we've got amazing brisket recipes there as well, both live as well as uh, edited. Should Jody, you? if someone wanted to uh, get in touch with you, where do they find you at? Me, they can follow me on all social media at Barbecue Dad Jody, BBQ D A D J O D Y. Where can they find you, John? Uh, Chef John Pinnell on all social media, or you can email me at Chef John at Rectech. I, I prefer carrier pigeons myself, but again, you can find me on all social media at Chef Greg Muller, or email me at Chef Greg at Rectech.com. We love hearing from you guys. Yeah, we do. Yeah. All right, everybody. From everybody here at the Rectech Worldwide Headquarters, God bless you. God bless the United States. And we'll see you at the Rectech. Do, 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 do. Killed it today. Brisket with the is brisket, delicious. Man. Mm. Do, so do, do. Wow. Fat side up and fat side down. Fat side up.